Amen. Good morning to all of you people of God who are gathered far and near. We give God praise and glory for another day to gather and worship. I don't know about you, but I am glad to be in the house of God one more time. I count the privilege Amen. to be here with the St. Luke Church of Lawrence, Kansas, and with our pastor uh, and my friend and sister, amen, the Reverend Brandy Jasmine Limits Ryan. Wherever you are, we greet you with Jesus' joy. Listen, we know it is not accidental that you are here. Amen. Whether you show up every Sunday morning because you are a member or whether you, because you are a man, a person who loves God, we are grateful. Amen. For God, we welcome you this morning to this place. And listen, before we gather and worship, uh, I, and you're probably wondering, who is this guy that's talking? I'm here by invitation of a pastor who, amen, is all vocal rest at this morning, this moment. Uh, she is with us in worship and she sends all of her love. And so we just all are waving from far and from here. Amen. But do me a favor. Can you get yourselves ready for worship? Ready to encounter a God who knows exactly what we need. A God who, amen, sees beyond our faults and knows our needs. And also prepare yourselves for this Faith in Action Sunday. Yes, it is a time for us to recommit to being a church and a people of God that has faith in action. So let's have a word of prayer as we get ready to enter into worship. Of course, we enter the worship, but we depart and serve. And maybe before we go into worship, before we pray, you may know of some people that maybe just need a quick text that you say, listen, we're about to go into worship. Why don't you join me? Yeah, maybe if you're on Facebook Live, you can tap in the chat and uh, invite someone. You can write their names. Amen. As we invite everyone to be a part of worship. So let's have a word of prayer as we center ourselves. And I know some of you are already typing names. You just be so right. I mean, we just want to center ourselves as we look to the Lord this morning. Father, you are perfect in all your ways. There is nobody like you. We gather, gather in this space virtually this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. We can't do anything purposeful, meaningful until you come, until you meet us in this place. Our prayer, God, is that you would not let us be people of, uh, uh, of just word, people who just listen to the word, but that we would be so challenged to be doers of your word, that we would see places where you need our help, where you need our hand, where you have called us to do something greater, not because of us, but because of you who, who, who resides in us. God, now forgive us of our sins, things that might keep us distracted, keep us, things that keep us from you. And we turn our attention to this space, this sacred place of worship, that you might speak to us in spirit and in the glory and praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I'm just gonna clap my hands and just give God praise. Amen. Some of you are worshiping in your own way, and that's okay. And we thank God for this worship this morning. God bless you. Give our prayer in Jesus' name. Put two 
Amen. Wonderful is his name. Amen. We thank God for that this morning. Amen. Wonderful is his name. We give God praise for that. Amen. Our scripture is coming. Amen. From James uh, chapter 2, verse uh, 14, verses 14 through 17. And of course, it is so appropriate as we think about Faith in Action Sunday. Reading from the New Living Translation, which says, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing and you say goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. My gosh, the word of God for the people of God, we say thanks. Be to God. Amen. Good morning, everybody. And we want to welcome you again to uh, the St. Luke Church. And I am not Pastor Brandy, uh, but I am certainly grateful at the invitation of our sister and our pastor, our friend, to be with us, as we, uh, to lead worship and to preach this morning. Pastor Brandy is in worship with us. Amen. We thank God for her. Amen. And she is recovering from uh, vocal rest. And sometimes God sits us down, doesn't he? And are there witnesses that sometimes he just sits you down uh, so that he can allow other people to step up? Isn't that what faith in action is? And so we are certainly grateful for our pastor and to all of the members of St. Luke Church. And many of you, I see that there are several of us on Facebook and there are about 20 of us here in the Zoom sanctuary. And we give God praise for you. Amen. And what a great time it is to gather. And we won't be here very long, but to do what the, thus says the Lord. Amen. And so we want to come at this time to give an offering. And there are ways that you can give at the first uh, at the St. Luke Amy Church. Uh, St. Luke thanks you for partnering with them in ministry. And you see right there on the screen that you can, well, if you're listening, uh, you can mail your check to St. Luke Amy Church, which is 900 New York Avenue. That's here in Lawrence, Kansas, 66044. Maybe you uh, are technology uh, savvy or technologically uh, minded, and you can go right to the Cash App or the Givelify, and you can go right to St. Luke Lawrence. I think the Givelify, sorry, is St. Luke, uh, hashtag, I'm a dollar sign, St. Luke uh, hyphen Lawrence, where you can give uh, uh, to the Lord and to the work that the Lord is doing here. Amen. Amen. You can't beat God's giving. Sister Graham, that's what they said, because I'm from North Carolina growing up. You can't beat God's giving, no matter how you try. So many of us are witnesses of how good, amen, the Lord has been to us. And so let's give it this time as we might be a blessing to the work of the Lord happening here.
praised this morning. Amen. The Lord be praised this morning. Our storage is empty. Mm. And we are available to the Lord. Anybody um, a, a witness this morning that you want the Lord to use you, amen, for the work that we have to do, amen. And so we give God praise this morning for this Faith in Action Sunday. I tell you, I feel a little tear coming out of my eyes for a wonderful reminder uh, of, of why we show up Sunday after Sunday, whether that be through virtual Zoom or in person, so that we can be available to what the Lord uh, is warning us to do. I mean, it's not our will. That's what we say, but what? Thine will be done. So we greet you this morning with Jesus' joy. Amen. And this Faith in Action Sunday. And so good to see so many familiar faces. Uh, I see many, many of my former stewards, amen, when I pastored in Kansas City who are here this morning. I ain't going to tell on y'all. <laughs> amen. amen. But it's so good to see friends of mine from the East Coast in Virginia and North Carolina. Uh, I even see uh, Reverend Carolyn. Amen. Good to see you. God bless you. You don't know me, but I know you. Amen. And your amen. giant foot speak for themselves. And we thank God for your ministry and for who you are. God bless you. Amen. And to all of the members of St. Luke, amen. And to Pastor Brandy, uh, Jasmine Mimitz, Ryan, we thank God for you. There is a word this morning as we gather and we think about what we have heard so far about how, amen, we want the Lord to use us. And as we gather here uh, this morning, uh, there is a word coming from uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 38. Jeremiah, chapter 38. Amen. Verse 6 through 13, Jeremiah 38, which reads this way. So they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cisterns uh, 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 of Malchiah, uh, the king's son, which was in the court of the guard, letting Jeremiah down by ropes. And now there was no water in the cistern, but only the mud. Are y'all listening? And Jeremiah sank in the mud. Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, a eunuch in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah into the cistern. The king happened to be sitting at uh, the Benjamin gate. So Ebed Melech left the king's house and spoke to the king, saying, My lord king, these men have acted wickedly in all they did to the prophet Jeremiah by throwing him into the cisterns to die there of hunger. For there is no bread left in the city. And then the king commanded Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, to take three men with you from here and pull the prophet Jeremiah up from the cistern before he dies. Y'all listening. So Ebed Melech took the men with him and went to the house of the king to a wardrobe of the storehouse and took from their old rags and worn out clothes, which he let down to, to Jeremiah in the cistern by ropes. Then Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, said to Jeremiah, just put the rags and the clothes between your armpits and the ropes. Jeremiah did so, and then they drew Jeremiah up by the ropes and pulled him out of the cistern. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard. Hmm. The word of God for the people, God bless be my God. I want to just uh, preach from uh, this topic this morning. Can you help me out? <laughs> hmm. There's just a simple question. Can, can you help me? Can you help me out? You know, our sermon today um, really sort of departs from the lectionary text, but the first reason of that is because of what we are gathered here for, this Faith in Action Sunday. I mean, it's a chance to remind us that our faith is not just to be alive and active in the four walls of the sanctuary, uh, but our faith must be lived and realized in the communities that we serve and also in the world are their witnesses. The second reason is that 
uh, we are here to celebrate, praise the Lord, and observe the birth of man that, that Eric, Michael Eric Dyson described in his book, Amen, I May Not Get There With You, as arguably the greatest American ever produced on our native soil. <laughs> that is Dr. Martin Luther King, whose birthday is January, what? The 15th. Mm. So I considered what uh, to say to uh, all of these things that are converging in the world and that are happening right around us. When uh, I was looking at something that Bishop uh, William Willimon had written uh, on the text of John 1, the gospel of John 1, he said, and observed how in this present time, we likely don't comprehend the messiness of what it means to uh, for Jesus to be the Lamb of God. Willimon comments on how we know where meat in the supermarket comes from. We just don't want to think about, uh, about it more than what we have to. Mm. Why? Because we are comfortable with our sterile environment, our, our overly sanitized culture, and we like it this way. <laughs> yeah, I say that because Willimon makes the point that we don't deal with messy. Right, there are witnesses. So, so in a discussion of how messy God uh, had to be, I mean, messy through the Lord uh, Jesus, the Lamb of God, how messy he had to be uh, or, or, or to get in order to save us probably gets lost on most of us. Hmm? Yeah, that's because the life and the death of Christ was not meant to be neat and clean. Yeah, that's what Willimon said. He said that life is messy. Are there witnesses here today that know that life can be messy? I mean, birth and illness and death that, that we are experiencing because of even this coronavirus and this variant are all parts in between messy. And God is involved in every one of them. <laughs> I love that this morning because it turns out that the reason we might need a, a faith in action Sunday, uh, not just one time of year, in fact, is that our faith put into action should prove that God is always involved uh, in the messiness of our lives. Mm, my God. Yes, he is. I mean, including birth and illness and death and all parts in between. This is at the heart of the gospel. Good news that I am privileged to share with you this morning. And many pastors are privileged to share every Sunday uh, each time we get up to preach. Therefore, I see how throughout this history that God has raised up prophets like Moses and prophets like Malachi and prophets like Martin Luther King to show us how to deal with the messiness of life. Oh my gosh, yeah. Faith in action. Oh my gosh, it's demonstrated in uh, the hymn that Dr. King uh, 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 espoused and loved. Uh, it was a song that I had heard while watching, amen, through YouTube, y'all, uh, uh, his funeral and uh, uh, years later, where the, 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 the hymn said that if I can, what, help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with word or even with song, if I can show somebody that they are traveling wrong, then my living, glory to God, shall not be in vain. Perhaps the words spoken by Dr. King uh, that are most famous or associated with his legacy are the words, I have what? A dream. You know it. I mean, these words and this image are durable. These words and this image are impressionable. But, but let us add to, uh, to those words this caveat uh, that these words survive too because they comfort folk who, who would rather entertain the dreams of unfree people than to comfort their rage and their despair. Mm. I hope y'all don't miss what I'm saying there, that, that many of us will cite King's words and clips of his speeches as a mantra for today and, and then tomorrow return to an agenda that shows their thinly veiled disdain for whatever will advance the causes for which King died in the first place. 
Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all looking this morning, but we we all must uh, must know and celebrate the fact that behind the words, uh, oh my God, behind the marches, behind this nonviolent social action of Dr. King lays the mind of a brilliant a tactician, a, a daring and courageous leader, and ultimately a fearless man. Yeah, however, as Peter, Peter Gomes uh, points out in his book, The Good Book, that if Martin, praise the Lord, Luther King had any real spot or any Achilles heel to his position and to his philosophy, it was this. He said that uh, the, the trouble with Martin Luther King is that he believed more in America and America's God than America did. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna be out here by myself. I can tell already. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching, mm. but I, I say that because this is what leads me on this faith in action Sunday. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord, Sister Graham, uh, to uh, voice for us to consider this passage from Jeremiah. Mm. That the passage of Scripture challenges me, and I hope it challenges all of us too. That the passage leads me to ask, and how, how do you think that Dr. King would respond to what's happening today? Mm, come on now, oh yeah, yeah, Dr. Davis, yeah. Now how would he respond to the plight that's going on mm, right now? Yeah, I ask that because what would he have to say about poverty? Yeah, what would he have to say about unemployment? What would he think about ghettos and, and the economy and, 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 and any other of the myriad ills that affect us right now? Somebody ought to shout out right now. Yeah. Yeah. What would Dr. King say to many people all around us? Uh, whom we may well describe as the falling or the those who have dropped off, the persons who need our help. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hear from people all the time, text messages, amen, Facebook messages, amen, people that I run into who are suffering from this type of plight, the following question, can you help me? <laughs> can you help me out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, now the word help uh, is a verb, y'all. I mean, it's defined as to give or provide what is necessary. Y'all put a plug there because I'm going to come to that later. What is necessary to accomplish a task or to satisfy a need. Yeah, that word help as a verb, y'all. Listen, what I'm where I'm going is to render assistance to something, right? It is to cooperate effectively with something. It uh, the, the word help means to give aid, to assist, to watch this, y'all, make easier or even less difficult. Oh my God, I'm getting in trouble already. To be useful, not just unique, but to be useful or profitable to something. Can, can I talk like I want to talk this morning? That The fact is that everybody needs help now and then. Come on, y'all. Uh, are y'all going to be honest this morning that someone, someone uh, we need someone to give uh, or to provide what is necessary for us to accomplish what we need to get done? Yeah. And yet, uh, uh, Pastor Karen, uh, Carolyn, yeah, and yet, Mm, it may be the simplest thing to do and at the same time, the hardest, and that is to ask for help. Okay, uh, let me free up somebody today. Let me just free you up. Amen, because nobody wants to, to sing hopeless. Nobody wants to sing helpless or to sing weak or unable to get something done in some kind of way. But, but brothers and sisters of God, some of us are in need of help and in need of help badly. Come on now. Oh, yeah, in the past year or two, I mean, we've been looking at names like Trayvon Martin and, and Jordan Davis and Eric Garner and Tamir Rice, who have literally become household names because of the tragic circumstances that led to their death. And we, after hearing all of that, still need to admit that we need some help. Oh, yeah, 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 but, but, but Reverend Jason, listen, uh, uh, I want you to make one thing clear, and that is, I said we need help, not pity. <laughs> oh, my God, I said we need help not pity. Yeah, am I talking to anybody this morning? You know in a, a short step, uh, it's a short step to move from pity to scorn. 
<laughs> oh my God, James Baldwin in, in his book, The Fire Next Time, speaks of how an attitude rooted, uh, rooted in pity, uh, he said, could deal with Blacks as a symbol or a victim, but had no sense of him as a man. Mm. Yeah, in other words, pity is unacceptable. Mm. Therefore, I, I mean, we need help, but at least some of the help we need is, is right in our own communities. Mm. Uh, some of the help we need is right at our own disposal, right in our own backyards. Uh, we need self-respect and self-dignity. <laughs> and on that front, we can, we, can, we can help each other, can't we? Yeah, yeah, we are not pathetic. Uh, we are not inadequate. We are not insignificant. Uh, we are not worthless. Oh, I hope you hear me this morning. I know conditions are tough for all of us, but, but I like the attitude that Martin King shares with us in his book, Stride Towards Freedom, uh, where he talks about a day as a young boy when he and his father, Daddy King, went to the shoe store. Uh, praise the Lord. And the clerk, he recalls, refused to wait on them because they did not move to the colored section of the store uh, as they should have. Yeah, yeah. And the senior king, Daddy King, took his son by the hand and left the store. And they and, 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 and as they walked out, he said, uh, praise the Lord, I don't care how long I have to live with this system. I don't have to accept it. Oh, come on, y'all. I, I want y'all to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying this morning. We don't have to accept what the system gives to us. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to accept what's given to you. What you learn to accept, you will end up learning to tolerate. Come on now. Are y'all hearing me? And you cannot complain later what you tolerated. <laughs> Oh my goodness to gosh. Yeah, we need help, but I'm not going to, I'm not asking you to give me anything except respect and to treat me with dignity. Okay, so that 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 ought to that ought to free up some of us, amen. That we ought to love God and then love each other. That that ought to free us up, amen. How we ought to respond to to each other. So if we are, are able and in a position to give help, we must help because some of our brothers and our sisters are thrown away. Some of our brothers and our sisters are left to fend for themselves. Some of our brothers and our sisters are left, in fact, to die. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, and, and we are not trying to die. Praise the Lord. All we need to is to have enough courage to ask the question, can you help me? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you, can you help me out? And so this brings us to our text, which now takes us into the episode of the life of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah had gotten himself into some trouble, y'all. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he had gotten himself into some trouble, which, by the way, was not unusual, Reverend, uh, 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 unusual for this prophet, because Jeremiah uh, is in trouble here because of the reasons a prophet gets into trouble. Yeah, Jeremiah made enemies, praise the Lord, by telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, because telling the truth to people will get you into some trouble. Yeah, Dr. Dr. King, like the prophet Jeremiah, constantly found himself in this very kind of trouble because he dared to tell the truth that was sometimes uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you must not know this if you, uh, I mean, you would not know this if you uh, have, have frozen Martin Luther King on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial uh, on a hot August afternoon in 1963, but, but, but he had told an uncomfortable truth in 1967. Yeah, he said in 1963 on a sweltering um, August afternoon, we stood in Washington, D.C. Uh, and talked to the nation about many things. Toward the end of that afternoon, I tried to talk to the nation about a dream that had, and I must confess to you today, he says, that not long after uh, talking about that dream, I started seeing it turn, what, into a nightmare. Now, we might argue, people of God, that the prophet Jeremiah or even Dr. King could have found a kinder, or a gentler, or maybe a more subtle approach to delivering their messages. But, but, but prophets don't always have gentle ways to tell the truth, do they? 
<laughs> oh my God, Dr. King never ultimately lost hope in his dream, but as a result of his piercing and challenging words, Dr. King, like the prophet Jeremiah, a man, praise the Lord, before him often calls resentment among the people to whom he preached and tried to help. Okay, I'm going to really preach and get in trouble this morning because sometimes those of us who are called, amen, to bring a word to the people of God, amen, bring a word to people that don't want to receive that word. Oh my God, today, yeah, quite a few are late coming to the party that, that, that venerates his life and, and his work. Oh my God, the sad fact is that, that, that rather than identify where they had gone wrong, are y'all listening to me? Oh, God, many people treated Jeremiah and uh, uh, Dr. King as if they were to blame for the conditions about which they preached. Oh, my God, y'all know y'all not going to invite me back. But listen, so in this text, by the time we arrive uh, at the 38th chapter uh, of Jeremiah, the prophet's enemies had found a way to dispose of him and his annoying prophecies. Yeah, they found uh, uh, to assist them uh, a morally feeble, pathetic figurehead uh, of a king named Zedekiah. Mm. Yeah, the enemies of Jeremiah convinced this ethically spineless monarch to throw <laughs> Jeremiah into the cisterns of Micaiah. Mm. Yes, right then, verse number six. Watch this carefully because that that, that these men did was uh, what they did was particularly hideous because they wanted Jeremiah to die. But they did not want their fingerprints <laughs> on the murder weapon. I think there was an old song that said that they throw their rocks and what? Try to hide their hands. <laughs> and so here it is that, that, that they put Jeremiah in a cistern, letting him down into, the, the, to, into it with the most uh, uh, malicious of intentions. And, and they threw him, the Bible says, into the cistern, letting Jeremiah down by the ropes. Now, there was no water in the cisterns, but only mud, and Jeremiah began to sink in the mud. Y'all, Bible, read that word right there in verse number six, that here Jeremiah is left alone. Here Jeremiah is with no way to escape. Here Jeremiah is sinking in the mud of this sister. Here Jeremiah is uh, to die a slow and agonizing and distressing death. I wish I had time today to talk about how there are those who have quartered off ghettos, those who have sectioned off cities, those who have partitioned off neighborhoods for one purpose and one effect, and that is to render those who live in those places invisible, to leave them alone, out of sight, to leave them to a place where they are die by themselves. They will never tell you this, come on, y'all, but that, that that's their purpose but and their malicious intentions, but the effect is still the same. And of course, Jeremiah would have died there in the cistern, but, but a man by the name of Ebed-Melech knew that Jeremiah was left there and came to his rescue. Oh, y'all going somewhere. Remember, the definition of help was to give or to provide what is necessary to accomplish a task or, or, or necessary to satisfy a need. And that's what Ebed Melech did. He went to the cistern where Jeremiah was left sinking in mud to help him out. Yeah, yeah. The text says that Ebed Melech took men with him. And look at this, y'all went to the house of the king, to the wardrobe of the storehouse, and took from their old rags and worn out clothes, which he had left, uh, let down to Jeremiah in the cisterns by ropes. And then Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, said to Jeremiah, this is in verse 11 through 13, that just put the rags and the clothes between your armpits and, and the ropes. And Jeremiah did what he was told. And they drew Jeremiah up by the ropes and pulled him what? Pulled him out by the cisterns. Can I, can I pause right here for just a moment? Because this is what attracted me to the story, Pastor Brandy, that every one of us uh, has needed at some point someone to be kind enough to, to help us out. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all just pull your hay lows over just a little bit, y'all. I mean, all of us, if we're being honest, uh, at some point in our lives, I mean, I know y'all got your own place now. You got a little car you drive, got a little money in your bank account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes some of us needed someone to be kind enough, enough to us to, to help us out. Mm. Oh, my gosh. And, and, and of course, now we all professional church folks. 
<laughs> church people, and no one might ever think so, but if we would just tell the truth this morning, y'all, somewhere along the way, we either had been let down, we had been dropped off, we had fell away. Sometimes we fell with our eyes open, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were left to die sinking in the mud, but by the grace of God, someone came along. <laughs> and helped us out. In fact, I'm going to lift my hands right there to tell God, thank you. Yeah, that someone came along and helped me when I needed it the most. Well, well I'm almost about to stop here, y'all, but let me share some lessons from this story, which we can use as a takeaway for this Faith in Action Sunday. Mm. Yeah, so if y'all writing anything down, here it is. Number one, if you're going to help somebody else, I mean, if you're going to help me out, let me, put it, let me, let me preach to myself because I don't want nobody to, to think I'm talking about you, but if you're going to help me out, you need to be at a higher vantage point than I am. <laughs> I'm just preaching the text, y'all. I mean, there is no deep revelation here. No unique exegetical insight is required. Just the simple fact of truth that must be stated that you can't help someone who is sinking in the mud if you're sinking in the mud too. Okay. Oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Lord, I'm going to be in trouble. Sister Graham, come help me. I'm in trouble now. Yeah, this is why. The genius of Dr. King warned us to let no man pull you so low as to hate him. Oh my God, the reason this makes sense to me is because if there is one thing that I have learned is that you can, you can get in the mud and wrestle with a pig. Come on, y'all. Uh, and both of y'all gonna get dirty, but it's the pig that has the most of the fun. Mm. Number two, that if you're gonna help me out, you need to act fast. Oh, come on, y'all. Stop looking at me like I'm strange. Yeah. Yeah, if you're going to help me out, not only do you need to be at a high advantage point, but number two, you got to move fast. So much of what concerns us, for example, in, at least in the enemy church, with all the rules and regulations, uh, come on, yeah, particularly in church, uh, uh, what, what, what seems to concern us uh, are of little concern to those who are called or we are called to help. Are y'all following me? Yeah, yeah, Ebed Melech didn't have time to sort through rules. Come on, Ebed Melech didn't have time to just consult the discipline. Uh-oh. <laughs> didn't have time to call, praise the Lord, the presiding elder. Mm, didn't have time to, 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 to get with the steward board because, because uh, uh, he had to get Jeremiah out of that cistern because what Jeremiah was sinking in mud. Okay, preach Jason Thompson here. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, people of God, time is of the essence. Come on. If you don't hear anything I say this morning, uh, when we go to put faith into action, time is of the essence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. While we talk among ourselves or hold another meeting that misses the point of what ministry uh, should be like and our lives are supposed to be about, well, while we argue over dress codes, amen, amen, and whether or not somebody should be having that color hair. Come on, y'all. While we argue, while we engage in methods and planning events that are, are to our, our, our own benefit and our own enjoyment, we are missing the opportunity to put faith where? In to some action. Oh, and meanwhile, people, we have been called to help. Come on, yeah, are sinking in the mud and, and their lives are hanging in the balance. Oh, y'all better wake up this morning because we ought to follow the example of Ebed Melek. Huh? Yeah, he went and got old rags. Glory to God. Oh my God, he went and got worn out clothes. Yeah, to help Jeremiah out. Oh, what am I saying this morning? Somehow I, 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 I didn't, uh, I don't imagine it mattered much to Jeremiah that, that Ebed Melech brought some old rags and, and brought some worn out clothes because Jeremiah just needed someone to help him out. Come on, y'all. I think my mama used to tell me beggars can't be choosy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ebed Melech was there to help Jeremiah when Jeremiah needed it most. And, and can I ask y'all a question this morning uh, that if you know someone is sinking, come on now, what y'all waiting for? Come on now, if you know somebody is sinking in the mud of life, well, what are you waiting for? Oh, time is of the essence. Somebody need to write that in the chat. Yeah, you need to act fast and go get them out. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not only, praise the Lord, that if you're going to help somebody, do you need to be at a higher vantage point? Not only if you're going to help somebody, you need to act fast. But 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 last thing that this text teaches us is finally, uh, I want to understand what compelled Ebed Melech to help Jeremiah out in the first place. Yeah, I was I was scratching my head uh, uh, about this, and praise the Lord, the name Ebed Melech is not one of the common names that we we normally hear or hear people cite or, uh, or or as their favorite Bible character. Let me say it that way. I mean, he is only mentioned in chapter thirty eight and chapter thirty nine of Jeremiah, and and there is no indication, praise the Lord, uh, about what motivated his kindness. I love this right now because as we are now um, challenged to think about putting faith into action, here is an example. Um, uh, 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 that, that we can use uh, or maybe as a backdrop for, for, for how we might leave this place today, being more committed to being uh, people of faith and people who, who exercise faith in action. And so there is no, no, no indication of why Ebed Melech had helped Jeremiah in the first place. I mean, Jeremiah didn't ask <laughs> for the help, right? He didn't ask Ebed Melech to help him out, and Ebed Melech did not wait. Here it is, y'all, for the request to come before taking action. Okay, I know that's gonna rest up on somebody's toes right there. Yeah, I want you to hear me one more time. That 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 Jeremiah didn't ask for help, but Ebed Melech didn't wait for the request to come before helping out. Can I say that one more time? Because I don't want y'all to miss it. Yeah, Jeremiah didn't ask Ebed Melech to help him out, but Ebed Melech didn't wait for the request before taking action. Gosh, I tell you, that's going to mess up somebody right there. So, so what prompted uh, Ebed Melech to help Jeremiah out? Well, we might, praise the Lord, draw out one conclusion here in this final point, y'all, from what we are told about Ebed Melech in the text. The text says that, that Ebed Melech was an Ethiopian and a eunuch. It's right there in verse number seven. You see it? Mm -hmm. So it would not stretch the imagination too far to suggest that Ebed Melech was an outsider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. E e I mean, Ebed Melech was uh, an outsider, maybe an outcast. Mm -hmm. Ebed Melech was perhaps a pariah in his time. Yeah, because according to the book of Leviticus, check it out, to it, uh, Leviticus 22 and 24, eunuchs were excluded from participating in public worship. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, and since he was an outsider, it makes perfect sense that Ebek Melek would have pity on Jeremiah and want to help him out. Yeah. Yeah. How do I know? Because if you ever have been an outsider, come on, y'all. Uh, in your own community, if you ever stood stood out like a sore thumb, uh, then you have more empathy for those who are who, who are going through the same thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a sad. Uh, it's sad that some of us, praise the Lord, have been in church for so long that we have forgotten what it feels like to be out. Oh, come on, y'all, to be outside. Y'all hear what I said, to be out, <laughs> to be an outcast. Yeah, to be out, yeah, to be outraged, to be out, to be outdone and maybe outflanked and maybe even outlaw. But, but I am motivated to help someone out because I don't mind telling you that I have not been in church so long that I have forgotten uh, what it used to feel like. Come on here, somebody. Yeah, like Jeremiah, I was sinking deep in sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was sinking far from the peaceful shore, sinking to rise no more but the master. Oh, my God of the sea. He did what he heard my despairing cry. And from a man, praise the Lord, my moment of needing help, he lifted me. Oh, now safe in my, oh, God, love lifted me, y'all. What kind of help uh, do we even need to help that, 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 that only love can give? <laughs> oh, my God, I'm done, y'all. I'm done this morning. Yeah, can you help me? Can you help me out? <laughs> yeah, can you help me? Can, can you help me out? Can, 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 can you help me on this Faith in Action Sunday? Can, can you help me? Hallelujah. The word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be unto God. And listen, before we go on, let's just offer an invitation. Maybe there's somebody who's sitting here. Maybe you're one of the people on Facebook, or maybe you're even looking at this broadcast later. Can I tell you, you didn't come by accident, but by providence, we want to extend to you an invitation to Christian discipleship. Maybe an invitation to, 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 to be a disciple of the Lord. Yeah, you see right there that a, a disciple is, is a person who's committed to being a part of the body of Christ or becoming more like Jesus or joining Jesus in this ministry. And we want to offer that invitation to you today. Hallelujah. This invitation where you can, praise the Lord, get started. Maybe you ought to uh, get back on track. Or maybe in some ways you are the person that needs to get off the, the sidelines and put some faith into action. Hmm. I want to pray today that God would help us, empower us to get in action to help somebody else out. Yeah. And even if all we got is rags, <laughs> God can use what you have to do something great. I pray this morning is that God would make us even more available or that we would make ourselves more available to be used by God. Can I pray this morning for you? Maybe if there's a specific thing that you know you want help with, you can write that in the chat. Maybe you want more uh, patience. Maybe you are preaching this, uh, uh, praying this morning for more of direction. Perhaps you are one of the ones that say, listen, I've been a little lax in days ago and I need more motivation. Yeah, take away our excuse, God, that we might be able to help out those in need. Yeah, not to just be hearers of the word, but to be doers. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we stretch our hands to you. There is no other uh, help that we know. Throughout this whole message, we feel the Holy Spirit moving and wrestling with our own human nature. I pray right now, God, that you would meet us at our point of need. Take away our excuse this morning. God, we thank you that, that, that you are showing us that we can do even small things and watch how our small things connect with others who are doing small things and watch you do big and incredible things, God. We thank you. And even now you are connecting us to purpose. Because purpose is actually just consciousness, God. And we don't want our own thoughts. We don't want our own way. We want our thoughts to be that of you, God. In fact, every time we tried our own way, we made a mess of things. We dropped the ball. Father, we look back a year and ain't even accomplished anything. But this year, we thank you that you're going to speed up what we've been trying to do. Why? Because we are following after you, God. I thank you now for, for the word that has gone forth with spirit and in power. God, we feel empowered to do your will. We bind the hands of distraction. We bind the hands of, 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 of feeling as though we can't do it like somebody else can do it. But God, you've created, you've formed, you made us in your image. And so now we thank you that you are showing us your more perfect will and your more perfect way. We give you praise for this in Jesus' mighty name. All the people of God said, amen and amen. I'm just going to clap my hands and give God praise for all that he has done and is doing. And we give God glory for that. Amen. 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 Listen, you have been worshiping this morning with, amen, the St. Luke Church and Pastor Brandy. If you'll just Amen. At least uh, spotlight yourself on the screen. Amen. So we can see you again. And we thank God for you and all the people of St. Luke for this worship services. We certainly don't leave this place the same, do we? We don't leave this place the same. We are walking on giant steps. Amen. Giant steps that we have to do the word of the Lord. Amen. There is one, praise the Lord, thank you, Pastor. There is one announcement uh, about the church conference that St. Luke it will be having January the 30th, y'all. January the 30th. Uh, January the 30th at 3 p.m. 
amen, via Zoom and conference call, amen. So please, amen, write that down, uh, call everybody and let them know, amen, that the work of the Lord is doing. Here's a great chance to put faith into action, amen. We thank you for worshiping with us this morning at the, uh, the um, St. Luke Church. And uh, we pray that Pastor Brandy's voice comes back because we need to hear from you. Amen. And we give God praise. God bless all of you. Amen. As we leave this place this morning. Amen. I have used this same benediction just because I love it. I love what it says. And even though some of you are not necessarily on the uh, unmuted, but I'm going to ask that you say it with me so that we can all praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> we can all take this as a mantra, a motivation, a mission uh, for our faith in action Sunday. Here it is. It says, may God bless us with discomfort and easy answers, half truths and superficial relationships so that we can live, uh, that, that we may live deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger and injustice, oppression, exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn hunger uh, and war, so that we may reach out, sorry, that we may reach out uh, our hands to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. May God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world and so that we can do what others claim cannot be done. And that is to bring justice and kindness to everyone we meet. Now may the grace of our Lord and our Savior be with all of us, not only today, but tomorrow and forevermore. This is what we pray. This as a benediction in Jesus' name. Amen.